because I've always like opened it and then like manually trying to scroll through to find these sort of com communications. This is, this is great. Okay. I have not seen this in Wireshark. This is fantastic. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Test one, two, three, everything is working. If you're new here, my name is Ash, I'm 27. And on this channel, we go over all things, try hack me, walkthroughs, cybersecurity, hacking. On today's video, we are going over day 13 packet analysis of the try hack me advent of cyber security event. For everything that you need, playlists, timestamps, and links, find that in the description and let's get in to the video. Okay, so we've got Try Hack Me loaded up and we're on packet analysis day 13. I'm just gonna boot the machine there and get that going. So after day six of the phishing email and day 12 that we investigated the malware, everything was looking pretty good until some suspicious traffic showed up just before closing. So we're gonna know how to do it, why it's important, some fundamentals of traffic analysis. We're gonna look at one of the tools that's mostly used for packet analysis, Wireshark, how to access patterns and identify anomalies, using other tools to identify malicious addresses, and we're gonna help the team investigate suspicious traffic patterns. So first up, packets and packet analysis. So packets are the most basic unit of network data transferred over a network. So when a message or data is sent from one device to another, a host to a server, system to system, it's transmitted in small chunks. So us analyzing or packet analysis is the process of looking through or extracting, assessing, and identifying network patterns, such as connections, shares, commands, and any other network activity like logins and system failures from pre-recorded traffic files. Next section, why does packet analysis still matter? So network traffic is a pure and rich data source. I mean, we're using networks to transmit data all the time. So a PCAP or packet capture file, this which includes network events and provides this data for us to analyze. So it captures live data and focuses on traffic flow, which provides statistics of the network traffic. And it allows us to go more in depth of what was being sent where and what was going on. Next up, points to consider when working with PCAPs. So we've got network and standard protocol knowledge. So just understanding the basic protocols, what they do, and then determining normal and abnormal behaviors. Then familiarity with attacks and defense concepts. So you can't detect what you don't know. So you need to understand how the attacks are conducted and to identify what's happening and where to look. And then lastly, practical experience in analyst tools. You can't burn down a haystack to find a needle. An analyst must know how to use the tools to extract information from packet bytes. So it can be hard, I personally, have only done packet analysis a few times, but we can create checklists or like playbooks that can create the analyst process and make it much easier. I love that sort of thing. Give me a checklist, give me a system. Okay, so here is one. We've got hypothesis. So have an idea of what you're actually looking for before you even start. Next, packet statistics. So this can show the weight of the traffic in the capture file and can help us see the bigger picture of the protocols, endpoints, and entire conversations. Next, known services. So this could be everyday operations like web browsing, file sharing, mailing, and known services. And we should know, and we will know, we'll learn to know what protocols are associated with what services and have a good understanding of the normal in case an adversary is trying to throw us off. Next, unknown services. So some potential red flags. So if we have any unknown protocols and services that we can quickly look up and uh, see if that's a bad thing. Next, known patterns. So we should have that sort of ingrained. So I think like the three-way handshake, like we can see that that's a known pattern. And next, an environment. So we should know the nature and dynamics of our environment. So IPs that are blocked, host names, usernames, structure, used services, external resources, maintenance schedules, and average traffic load. So next is what is Wireshark and how to use it. So this is an industry standard tool for network protocol analysis, and it has become essential in all traffic and packet investigation. Uh, Try Hack Me has a whole Wireshark module, which is on my to-do list. So let's go ahead and start our machine and we can see what we're 
are working with. All right, so we've got our desktop here and we can see a day 13 PCAP NG file. Not sure what the difference between a PCAP and a PCAP NG, but that's our file. So let's double click that. And by default, our operating system will load it into Wireshark. We'll give that a full screen. All right, so it's gonna look a little daunting at the beginning. We're gonna see a lot of information. It's okay, let's follow our instructions. We've got use the statistics protocol hierarchy. Let's go and do that. Statistics protocol hierarchy. Now look at the output. The majority of traffic is on TCP. So we've got here under IPv4, we've got UDP and we've got TCP. So percent packets, we've got 99.4% of packets is using TCP. So we can also view the connections by IP and TCP UDP protocols to view the overall usage of the ports and services. The next step is viewing the IP conversations to spot if there is a weird, suspicious, not usual IP address in use. So we'll close the hierarchy and we'll go statistics, conversations, and navigate to the IPv4. Okay. I have not seen this in Wireshark. This is fantastic because I've always like opened it and then like manually trying to scroll through to find these sort of com communications. This is this is great. So we've got the most packets are sent between our address A and then this 10, 11, 5, 1, 3, 7. So we've got 1400 packets. Then we only have two packets sent to this address, four packets between this address and 10 packets between this address. So I don't know, this could be just normal, you know, activity, just sending a lot of information between these two addresses. This, just looking at the, I'm assuming that this is like an external, so and it's only sent twice so maybe this is a little abnormal so now that we have this information of ips port numbers and packets this information is going to identify suspicious ip addresses connection and ports analyze the details carefully we may discover the ip addresses and services used by the bandit yeti apt so we're going to analyze the findings and navigate to the tcp part and look at the results the port 80 is used to communicate in tcp port 80 represents a http service as we use our web browser to usually access. Next, you can view the DNS service is also used by navigating to the UDP section. Now we have two target protocols to analyze. Before continuing on specific protocol analysis, you should have completed the following checks, answered some analyst questions. The checks to do packet statistics, service identification, IP reputation, and questions to answer. We've got which IP addresses are in use. So we've got those. Has a suspicious IP address been detected? I think so. Has a sus suspicious port usage been detected? Not sure on that yet. Uh, which port numbers and services are in use and abnormal level of traffic of any port or service. So would it be weird just to have a couple packets off? Yeah, I don't know. So after viewing the conversations, we collected the following information. So source, destination, IP address, protocols, port numbers and services. So let's focus on our HTTP and DNS. As a nature of these protocols, everything transferred over these protocols is clear text. At this stage, filtering DNS packets to view the interacted domains is a good start before deep diving into clear text data. Close the statistics view and type DNS in the search bar. Close, and we have a search bar and apply a filter of DNS. So DNS packets will help us to do it, identify connected domain addresses to decide if they are affiliated with suspicious and the Bandit Yeti API. Click the first packet and use the lower left section tool of the packet details pane, pan, to view the packet details. So we've got, can't see domain name system response. Oh, okay, just had to apply the filter, that's better. Okay, now I can only see the DNS here. Now I see domain name system. So we've got multiple collapse sections. So we click on domain name system, span the DNS view of the packets. There are additional collapse sections under the corresponding section, expand them to view all available details. So we have flags. So my understanding of flags, these are like the headers in a packet, I think. And we've got queries. Oh, hey, cdn.bandityeti.thm. Well, that's a bit dodgy. So if we go over to the 29186 and have a look, we can also see that that 
has a bad. So before continuing on HTTP analysis, ensure we have completed the following checks. So we've looked at the DNS queries and the DNS answers, which domain addresses are communicated. So we can see CDN, um, Bandit Yeti, THM. Do the communicated domain addresses contain usual or suspicious destinations? Not good. Do the DNS queries look unusual or suspicious malformed? Yeah, I'm not really sure what else is making it suspicious besides the domain, but that's okay, we'll continue. We've discovered the connected domain addresses and now we're one step closer to identifying these patterns a part of adversarial actions of Bandit Yeti. You should notice the obvious sign in domain addresses at this stage. Let's filter to HTTP packets. So we'll use the filter again and we'll just type in HTTP and hit enter. Okay, cool, that works straight away. Click the first packet in HTTP and we'll look at our get requests. So we've got our get mystery.exe. So that's super. Let's go under the hypertext transfer protocol. And we've got this request to get this super dodge, super dodge, security level chat group sequence under the full request URI and evaluate the user agent. Uh, so it was running on a Windows machine, looks like a PowerShell. Um, so I think that that's like a non-standard user agent. Before continuing the next steps, ensure to have completed the following checks. We've seen the get request, we've looked at the URIs. Oh, so okay, we've got our host addresses here too. So again, that same bad actor. And we've looked at the user agents, which addresses are communicated to. Is there any resource shared share event between addresses? So that's 101157. And then we have that one going out to 1010. So that's that's the request. And then that's the OK. So get and then receive. And then we've asked for the fab icon. And then we've got that back OK. So that's pretty much it. So it's just two requests in a file event. Yeah, so we've got two files, exe and then the icon. Do the user agent fields look unusual? Um, I guess so. I guess that's a malformed one. I'm just guessing because they're saying so. So we should identify the stealthy connections between the Yeti Bandit, uh, the Bandit Yeti APT. Looks like the adversarial group chose to use the, the daily used services and create less noise over the common protocols to avoid detection. Okay. So an investigation doesn't contain any obvious abnormal patterns. Like we don't see scans, brute forcing, exploitation so it's just one payload that they've gone and got that's it but we have suspicious connections and domains and file shares and these are our red flags uh, and we can require in-depth analysis from here so there's a few steps more for conducting the case and elevating to the upper level analysis so let's extract the the shared files and conduct fundamental checks on the files before finishing the analysis. So we'll go file export object, file export objects, HTTP. Cool. So this just pulls out the files that were in here uh, and we can just go save all. Cool. And then they're on our desktop, the actual files themselves. So we'll open up the terminal and we'll CD over into our desktop. And here we can then use SHA256 sum and we'll run that against our mystery gift.exe and I'm going to grab that string and we can go over to virus total and paste that in. So we'll go search and we'll paste in that hash and we'll see that we've got some sort of Trojan. Not good, not good. Eh? So we've verified that the file was malicious. Final steps, creating a report and escalating the sample to the upper level analysts who conduct a more in-depth analysis of the malware. Okay, so just further checking everything over. Uh, so let's go over our questions for day 13. Um, so let's go back to our VM, open back up to Wireshark and we'll go, so in that protocol menu, what is the percent packets value of the hypertext transfer protocol? So we'll go back to statistics, protocol hierarchy. And we're looking for HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol. And we're looking for the percent packets. So we've got percent. I mean, it's got a hundred here, but that's not what it's asking for. Oh, I've um, I got the wrong filter on. It was from DNS. Or did I do this without? Yeah, I think we actually did this without any filter. Statistics, protocol hierarchy. Okay, that looks a little bit better. <laughs> 0 0.3. Yeah, cool. I was like, there was nothing that even followed the format. Okay, view the conversations, statistics, conversations, which port number has received more than 1000 packets. So on the TCP section, and we have one port 
that's gone over a thousand and that is 3389. Next up, what is the service name of the use protocol that has received more than 1000 packets? So I'm getting a couple of things, um, but I'm still not really sure. Looking at the wrong port, aren't I? RDP. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at port A for some reason. That's open. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I do the silliest thing. Okay, filter the DNS packets. DNS again, enter that. So what are the domain names? So we need to enter the domains in alphabetical order and in defanged format. I'm going to open up Cybershare for this one. We've got defang URL, cdn, bandityeti.tryhackme. So we're looking for two domains. Uh, okay, so it's cdn and then we've got the best festival company. Okay, type that out. What am I doing? I'm not even using the defanged Okay, next we'll go back and get the HTTP. What are the names of the requested files? So we've got mystery.exe and then we'll go grab this, this, and slap that in. Wrong order. And again, not using defect. What are we doing? Okay, which IP address download the executable file? So that's in our destination here. So this is our 10.11.5.137 defanged IP address. Sorry that's the wrong one our source is where it's going cool cool the source of our get request that makes a lot more sense which domain address hosts the malicious files so the domain the full uri there is the bandit yeti right that we already had we've got this cdn um just make sure it's defanged what is the user agent value used to download the non-executable file the non-executable so looking at the fab icon this time so in this case uh, we go onto the http uh no get oh nim http client and then after we export it, which we already did, calculate the hash files, what's the SHA-256 hash? We can go back to our terminal that we had open and we can copy that, put that in. So lastly, uh, we've searched that on virus total. We wanna go to the behavior tab, spelled with a U. There are multiple IP addresses associated with this file. What are the connected IP addresses? Okay, scroll down, we can see IP traffic. So it's just all of this. Enter the IP addresses defanged and in numerical order and just one after the other. Okay, copy paste. Um, I don't know if it wants the IPv6. Please note that the VT entry changed since official walkthrough was recorded. Check the VT website uh, to get everything that we need. So only wants IPs, so we can get rid of our colon port number. Okay, so I'm just gonna ignore the IPv6 real quick, see if that's it. You can ignore the DNS server. So that was the 8888. Um, so we'll just try that. Just the IPv4s is with the IPv6, still no luck. Oh my gosh, I'm wrong one again. Um, so looking at how many it's actually looking for, it's only wanting four IP addresses. So it took me a little bit, but I just had to actually count how many it was looking for. So I guess this 192 uh, is an internal, so it doesn't really count. These are your only actual external ones. That's a DNS record, that's IPv6. Um, so that could be the same, um, both using UDP, not really sure. So it was just the 20 and 23s. Okay, Ooh. all right, there was a few stumbles there with this one, but I'm glad that we got to the end. So thank you very much for watching up until this point. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. I appreciate you. Uh, feel free to ding the bell also. Uh, I'm gonna let YouTube recommend a video for you, personalized to your viewing needs plus the playlist to everything else that you need for this series. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you again. Bye. <laughs>